Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to talk about the Dell PowerEdge R510 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on solid state drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R510 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video, as I mentioned, is specifically focused on solid state drives for your R510. So here's what we're gonna do in this video as a whole. We are going to go over different types of compatible solid state drives for your R410 or R510. We're gonna go over the max speeds, the max sizes. We're gonna physically install one, which is really easy because it's a hot swap. I do wanna know that there is an R410 that is cabled. That would be a little bit different. What we're gonna be doing is the hot swap uh, and then we are going to show you a cool little tool that we like called HD Sentinel. What we do is we hook up a storage array to our server so that we can uh, test in bulk and we will uh, show you how to test for power on hours and health scores um, and this is especially useful if you're getting a used drive you just want to make sure that you have a good quality used drive. Uh, that's a cool tool that we recommend and the other tool that we recommend is Dell Diagnostics which is great as well. Uh, the combo of those is uh, really great for just making sure that you have a good quality drive. So all right let's hop in. The uh, types of compatible drives you're going to have SAS and you're going to have SATA and there's some advantages and disadvantages to both. So with SAS you're going to have a higher speed overall. You can get 6 gigabit per second where SATA you can only get 3 gigabit per second and SATA drives are going to cost less though. So essentially you're going to pay more to get a faster speed. So depending on what you're looking for if you don't need the speed, SATA is the way to go. If you want the extra speed, SAS is the way to go and uh, you know again it's just what are you looking for, right? Well the sizes on the Mac side are the same either way that you go. It's going to be 7.68 terabytes per drive slot, which is honestly really great storage overall when you think about it from a solid state drive side. Uh, the nice thing about the uh, 410 and the 510 is that they do accept large form factor drives. Uh, so if you wanted to put in you know, a high terabyte drive and you're not worried about the speed that you get uh, from a solid state drive, then you can still sh uh, shove in some pretty big drives for uh, cheap price overall. Uh, but there's definitely some advantages on solid state drives. It just makes your system run so much smoother and so much faster. And it's one of the things that we always recommend for an older system. Uh, uh, like an 11th gen 410 or 510, you definitely want uh, to basically do anything to, to band-aid it to make it a little bit faster. I always recommend upgrade your solid state drive and upgrade your RAM. Those are going to be the best band-aids to extend the life of it overall. So, all right, uh, now that we know a little bit more about the max speeds, the max sizes, we're going to show you how to actually install one. All right, got our ASD gear on, safe to work on our R510. So really this is gonna be a simple upgrade like we mentioned. So you're just gonna remove your old drive, you're just gonna push the circle, pull out the latch, just take out your old drive, put it to the side. So now we're gonna put in our new SSD and I do wanna note that this is gonna be a 3.5 inch tray with the converter or the adapter to be able to put in a 2.5 inch SSD because realistically your SSDs are gonna be 2.5 inch. So you have to make sure you have the proper kit with the bracket and the adapter. So literally you're just gonna slide this in a very, very simple upgrade. You can do it while your machine is on, which is why it's called a hot swap. Uh, and again, just uh, uh, overall a great addition to boost the performance of your R510 and add a little bit of extra life to it. So now what we're gonna show you how to do is actually how to test it using Dell Diagnostics. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to go ahead and do is boot up your server and during post you want to go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side and then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen but you just want to go ahead and press yes and it'll take a little bit of a second to load but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So immediately whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there's a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's going to be tested. On the right hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. One thing I do want to mention about Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue. 
or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC, but you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can this can take a while. It can take, you know, maybe a low end of 20 minutes up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else, and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to, one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now, and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been, you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. And like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe, and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.